Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stroman. Thanks for hanging with us because we love you just to make you feel good about where you live and discover new ways to love it more, right? And I grew up with a goldfish. I didn't have an aquarium. I had a bowl. And what I had in my idea was that maybe if I put it in my bathtub, it would feel like it had more room to swim. That's nice. And so I did that. That's a big area <laughs> with soap in it. No, there was no soap. <laughs> okay. It probably wasn't a very safe idea, but at yeah. the time I was a really young kid. I very thought, well, nice. I would gradually make sure the temperature was right. It was not too cold, not too hot, but it probably wasn't very safe. Mm. But the fish made it okay. But how you long, had, how, long, how long was it there? Oh, just, you know, for like uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. a quick little, you know, I, an, an I, adventure. I love it. I You know, we my mom had this idea. I'm going to put a fishbowl hanging from a lucite hanger above the window in the bedroom it's going to be glorious and we had a beta, the beta fight, thing. you know uh, fighting fish uh-huh. with clear marbles it was beautiful i mean right. the stark it's contrast artistic. of the of the red fish and the bowl and stuff and then we all put we put it up my dad installed it in one of those hangers over the window and then we laid on the bed and we just gl- gazed at it for a moment and then it fell oh, and geez. crashed all over the floor oh, and everything was on <laughs> glass oh, everywhere. And, you couldn't save and then the we fish. did it again and the same oh, thing geez. happened a second time. Well, so we don't want that to happen. No, we so don't. maybe, just maybe, you know, because everyone probably has had that moment with a fish. You know, you go to the carnival and then you win the fish. What's the deal with throwing the ping Throw pong? Throw the ping pong the, ball you know, in the fish bowl water. It yeah. feels very traumatic for those fish. Yeah. But, you know, what about having an aquarium? You know, because there's See, something there, very now peaceful. That's an idea. I mean, every time I go to a doctor's office, they have them in the lobby and you go, ooh, isn't that soothing? It just feels so relaxing and the beautiful coral and the bright colored, you know, different kinds of fish. And you go, this could be really addicting. You know, sure. and, you, and you see people who have aquariums maybe like behind their headboard, you know, in their bedroom, right. you know, or it's like a wall in the living room. You've probably seen some really cool ones, right? I've seen some great ones. And, you know, the, the thing about all the, the fish tanks in the doctor's offices or the, you know, Chinese oh, restaurants. Oh, I know what Because it, it's, it's really great feng shui to have the fish, right, at the open the right. open area of the sure. restaurant. They're all, what you don't see and know are is the that people. they've got people who are their maintenance people. Or that how about come. in Vegas, the restaurant we went to? How, how often do they do it? There's a restaurant. We'll tell, let's tell them about it. It's a, it's a great restaurant. Yeah. It's Chart House. Yeah. It's and, a chain, yeah. but in this particular but this place. Is, but this is in um, this is in Las Vegas. It's in Vegas, baby. And and when you go there, I mean, they have a tank, and they've got a guy in scuba gear. That and he's is in there every it. day. He's every in there day cleaning, cleaning. cleaning yeah. it. So you're going to say that it's hotels gonna say that and it, lobbies. Yeah, it's maintenance heavy. You know, if it's, you're going to do yeah, the aquarium, you have ready. to be prepared to either have a service come in and really take care of it, or or suck it up and do you, it. You got to know your stuff because so, it's a lot of pH balancing and all that kind of stuff with the water. So right? let's talk about the different things because there's there's salt water versus fresh water. Right. And then there's also like the the reef tank. Well, let's first talk about the prices. The fresh water prices about two hundred and seventy dollars. Yeah. Because that's what that's like some gravel of filter. Yeah, that's the that's the colorful gravel substrate. You got a good filter for about. You gotta 50 have a bucks. treasure. Gotta, gotta have, have the a treasure light. chest. You gotta have a p- sunken pirate <laughs> ship, obviously. You know, you know food the food nest, and the, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. All that stuff. That's gonna be about two hundred seventy to three hundred bucks. But then and the that's salt just a sta- water. That's a standard like twenty nine dollar aquarium. Very very basic. Yeah. But then what if you say no? I want to have the really well, you, beautiful and, fish. And the reason being is because there are so if you've ever been snorkeling, obviously in, in the ocean, you can tell the Coral's amazing. The fish colors are overwhelmingly vibrant. Yeah. vibrant. Almost it's, like fluorescent. It's a whole different feel. Like look. a black light. You know, it's almost yeah. like they're, they're on a black That's light. That's exactly right. So the, the freshwater fish are not as vibrant always, no, right? No, And if you do one of those beta fish, you can only do one because they'll attack they're anything by themselves. that's in them, right? They're kind of bullies, mean so guys. The, so the first is the budget. The fresh water is going to be the least expensive. The yep. salt water is a little bit more. Six, about 635 bucks. Okay, and that's for because that. it's just has more stuff, more equipment. You got your not only well, you've got your substrate, you've got your power heads for water movement, you got a skimmer, you gotta have a hydrometer, you got the salt mix, you got the Ooh. live rock, you got the pH test. See, now kits. you're a chemist, right? Now, that's it. Yeah. Now you're going into the next level. And then you gotta scrape the sides of the tank off and so really it's a it's almost it's a commitment. It's double double and a half. It's about six hundred and thirty five to six hundred and fifty bucks Plus for the add same size. The time, like your time. Yeah. Are you gonna do it or you could hire a professional to come in and you know, every Which, week or two. For the first couple of months I would highly recommend because then you learn from them and you'll see what they're doing and you can yeah. figure it out on your own. Probably it's like Having a pool and not having a pool guy yeah. or having a pool guy to clean. It's a whole, it's a huge commitment. So, so in addition to my pool boy, yeah. 
Oh, I got my aquarium boy. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, <laughs> I had just thought of that. Really that might interesting. Be kind of anyway, uh-huh. <laughs> and, and they're always uh, obviously wearing harem pants. Yeah, I know. I but know. then there's the reef tank, and that's that other level, like at the yeah. Chart House restaurant, sure. where it is, where you've got these things are moving, and the reef. They're alive, yeah, right? and, the, and the and the live coral. Yeah. And now you got to get into reverse osmosis filtering because that really has to be legit, and there's got to be circulation, and and you're really kind of checking levels all the time. And, and that, that's like what? How much? That's going to be almost twelve fifty to fourteen hundred bucks Jeez. for a twenty nine gallon. And that's aquarium. without even the fish. That's that's, that's just right. that's just the stuff. Yeah, and once you start getting into the fish, you know those are they go from a buck fifty all the way up to. 50, 100, 250 Hundreds. bucks, right, well, for like, one fish. Exactly. And, well, we have a, a koi pond, and you had koi for a while, and you know that even the small ones are like $25. That's right. So you can imagine some of these really exotic aquarium fish, you know, and then you think, oh, my gosh, I, I've got these fish. I want them to live forever. And you got you have the pressures on to really keep them healthy and yeah, healthy. Yeah, and, and I think, too, when most people think that they want to have an aquarium they're assuming it's going to look like that reef tank that yeah. has all those amazing vibrant the fish office. and coral yeah. right so right. so you know definitely make sure that you understand the price difference and it really adds up quickly i mean you're 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 shooting up when and and you're you're in the store and the guy in the aquarium store is like well you're going to need this that the other and then pretty soon he's droning on and on you don't even hear him anymore and you're just kind of you know you're zoning frozen. out frozen yeah. And, yeah. and you realize this is a huge commitment so be prepared before you walk in. And so maybe before you even think about first, you know, lay out the budget, but then you want to even before that decide on, you know, where you're going to have this aquarium. Is it going to be a freshwater aquarium that's going to be, well, if that needs the light and the temperature. It won't be affected by external sources like the windows or the heater vents, but sunlight that enters through the room through this unshaded window could affect the temperature of your tank. Yeah, and that's, that's going to give you algae. So you go, wait a minute. So maybe that aquarium won't work in the bedroom or in the living room. So you got to have to kind of think that through. Right. And and also keep in mind, it doesn't want to be moved uh, if ever. So once and you why find is that? Well, because it's uh, 29 gallons of so water weighs a huge, yeah. w- is, is hundreds of pounds. You don't want to move it. Exactly. They, <laughs> it's not so much it that doesn't, they, and it doesn't want to be moved. Trust me. I mean, it, because then what happens is that you disrupt, you know, your Swashing, coral configuration, yeah, and yeah, the water yeah. sp- spills out all over the floor yeah. when you do. So it's like a typhoon. To that, you know, put in some thought as to where can I put this where the kids aren't going to knock it over when they're running through the door. I don't have to move it. I can service it and get easily to the top of the of the tank. You know, you don't want to mm-hmm. have it in some nook where you can't access all the stuff you're going to need to access. Mm-hmm. So it's a permanent it's it's like putting in a, a kitchen cabinet you know you want to definitely it's there forever you mm-hmm. know you're not going to move it but it's going to weigh like what 500 pounds at least absolutely when you think about it it's yeah. like a couple people it's a couple well it's like uncle ernie <laughs> like, and, <laughs> and aunt millie you yeah know? that's yeah. a lot it's a lot of it's a b- lot of big people and then you want to think about the kind of fish i mean do you want to have the, those more expensive bright you know tropical fish yeah, and the chances are you probably do because you're going to that's the look you're probably assuming is the aquarium look. So But you can only add a couple at a time. Well, you also have to have them in quarantine before they go in. Not only that, but before the whole thing goes, you got to see this is what happened with me and my kids, you know. It's like, "Ah, I want fish, I want fish. We got to it." So I went there and I got the tank. I didn't get the salt water. I got the fresh water to start. You can't introduce the fish into the tank immediately. It has to settle down. It has down. to settle down. You got to get the pH balance right. It's not so, just the temperature, but the no. chemical. So you it's, know, not, the it's not. It's not like we're going on Sunday and we're going to get an aquarium. Everybody, it's no, going to be great. No, you got to wait. It's more like days and days and days of acclimating the water and yeah. the fish to the new environment. So, don't set that up with your kids you that be you're going to do this. Yeah. 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 That's absolutely true. And then also in that time, you're going to research enough to know what you want to do. You also want a, a reliable person at the store, a go-to person where you can get real clean, easy advice from them. It doesn't. And you know feel what? There's a lot of those places. It seems like you know the whole fish care world. It's a real niche. There's some real loyal activists you know, in this world, and I found that several of these uh, the fish stores, not just like the generic, like the Petco's. I mean, there's some people there that are really good, but the specialty fish stores. Haven't you found that? Like these guys they know are their hardcore. Stuff. They yeah. know their stuff, and they have solutions to help you with the problems that inevitably, you know, going to come up in terms of the temperature. Well, I the, mean, you know, to your point about the big box pet stores, yeah, those those are like kids that are hired 
by the hour for a high school job. They don't really know much. I mean, I'm not a lot of them do. I'm not, don't get me wrong, but to your point, specialty stores are going to have real expert advice. And they're better for, for problem solving yeah, too, right? Exactly. So anyway, when we come back, we have more tips to uh, to kind of troubleshoot your way should you get an aquarium. And then maybe once you had the aquarium, you go, well, wait, that was kind of fun, but now I want to do something with the empty aquarium. Yeah, because all the, f- the fish didn't make it. Well, maybe they so made now, it. Let's try, they went to college. Let's, let's try pla- yeah, no, they graduated. They went to let's try plants now. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're listening to Home Wizards, Eric Stormer, Cindy Dolby. Sure to check out our website anytime, yourhomewizards.com, because we love to improve your home and improve your life. So, you know, if you're going to get one of the the most expensive aquariums and you're going to fill it with exotic saltwater fish, Mm -hmm. the idea is it's going to be more expensive than a freshwater aquarium. And, you know what I mean, it's kind of like they're the royalty fish versus the freshwater fish of the commoners. Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm. But the thing is, once you get started, you're going to be wondering why it took so long to get into the saltwater side. And... If you do it right, if you do all the research, the saltwater aquarium actually becomes its own kind of an ecosystem and takes care of itself down the road. You just have to kind of really be patient. Right. I mean, things like live rock, saltwater live rock, for example, it becomes its own filtration entity. I love that idea. And so oftentimes, I mean, I think it's recommended that you definitely start with the live rock because it just provides a secondary source. And the other thing, too... The additional cost on the on the aquariums that are salt water with you know that live feel the protein mm-hmm. skimmer and that does actually dissolves waste. So oftentimes when the fish go to the restroom mm-hmm. in a traditional aquarium, it just sinks down to the bottom and it goes into the gravel and then you do a ten percent water change in the fresh water there. and it's always there unless you kind of pull it all out and start over again. Right, the theory being that those fish are going to consume that and become sort of a self contained ecosystem, right? The fish do all the work. Whereas in the in the aquariums that are salt water where they're live rock and you've got the protein skimmer, the reason you have that is because you just simply have to have the machines do the work that the ocean normally would do, right? Mm-hmm. So that there's a cost to that, there's a premium and, and you have to buy the machines that actually do that. So it's the protein skimmer, it's the live rock, you know, it's the the right light source and system because, you know, they've got to have that sunlight that normally would be in the ocean environment too that, you know, really going to give you that that feel. And then it's the salt water thing that you have like in a salt water pool. you got to change that salt water and amend it all the time. The level of salt. Otherwise they... They're living in environments that don't work for them, right? So, mm-hmm. again, you are a chemist. You're part chemist and part hobbyist, and it definitely requires more effort now. And, and we can't forget the specialized diet, too. And by the way, I'm Cindy Dole. Oh, hi, I'm Eric Stroman. And this is Home Wizards, and we're yeah. talking about, let's say you want to have an aquarium. I never had an aquarium. I had, I've had beta fish and yeah. goldfish in bowls. But I think I'd love to try the aquarium. Uh, we have a koi pond, and I love I love our koi. Yeah, you sure seem to love and it. And I think there's something very relaxing and rewarding about interacting with fish. And I just love the beauty, especially of the saltwater fish. But beware. I mean, you know, it's tragic when you lose a fish of any, you know, price point. But imagine losing a $75 saltwater fish. Right. Then you go, whoa, not well, only am I sad. Right. I just lost 75 bucks. And to that, you know, the other thing, the other cost, the additional cost for the more expensive saltwater tank, you have to have a quarantine tank, Mm -hmm. which is essentially a holding tank for the fish when you're going to introduce them into your tank. So that tank has elements of the water that's in your tank. But it's a bare bones version of it, so it's essentially it's a, a halfway it's a, house. It's a basically a re, it's a rehab <laughs> facility for these because they're like drug crazed clownfish that have gone nuts and they need to be reintroduced into society, as it were. Yes, thank Are you. Saying you. that Nemo is drug crazed, that, I might be <laughs> no, saying that. Yeah, no. a little problem with the prescription no, meds. Anyway, no, no, no. But I mean, seriously, I mean, the the colors of the uh, of the saltwater fish are just so luscious. I really am interested in trying this. I think at some point in time. So, I mean, we just have to kind of consider all the options. There's lots of uh, invertebrated shoes from too, by the way. You know oh what I mean? yeah, yeah. In terms exactly. of fresh, so much, 
Huh? Go ahead, yeah. No, the freshwater hobbyists certainly have the invertebrates available, but not to the extent of the saltwater. I mean, you know, you name it, a local fish store probably has it, like from clams and shrimps, you know, to feather dusters. Yeah. And they're, sea they're, stars. They're visually appealing. Really and They really cool. make a, a huge even difference. Even seahorses. I know. I love the seahorses. And maybe even a mermaid. Oh, you never know. <laughs> Wishes do come true. <laughs> so these are all the things to, I mean, again, the price point is anywhere from the cheapest, 600 bucks ish yep. The middle of the road is double that, 12 yep. to 1300 That's right. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The cheapest is 200 That's the, for the then, fresh water, yeah. Then 600 and then the most expensive with the coral reef and everything is close to 12 to 1300 yeah, So that's it's, again for a 29-gallon tank. Yeah. Well, all right, so let's say that it's time to do um, some thinking because we've done our fish, we've had we've had our dwarf angel fish, we've had our clown fish. Let's say that, you know, maybe you've passed the fish on to the kids who've grown up and they've moved they've out of the house. They've taken the fish in their own bowl. Yeah, they're all happy. To Ohio, to right. a new apartment. But now you have yeah. this mammoth aquarium that's sitting now in your living room. It's right. empty. And you're going, what on earth am I going to do? I don't necessarily want to go back and have more fish at this point in time in my life because I, I'm traveling, I've got other things I'm working, I don't have the time, right? So what are you going to do with that empty aquarium? Uh, well, as far as I can tell, you're going to do one of two things. either Well, three things. Either A, mm -hmm. you're going to just throw out the tank and get oh, no, rid no, of it. No. B, you're going to do a reptile deal. Could. And that's a whole other ecosystem. Fun. Or C. Huh? What are you thinking? Well, there, and there's more than C. There's the terrarium aquarium. Sure, yeah, I love that. You can also because you can the, reuse the lights from the light source that you had to keep the fish healthy. Can also be grow lights for plants. Beautiful. Yeah. Have all these ferns, small yeah. plants, and so forth. Um, but how about also considering turning that large tank into a coffee table, Ooh, or that, even a desk in your office? Oh, you mean putting stuff on you know a top over on it? on top over it. You could now, you could basically, after you clean it, yeah. you have to do, what would you say, some really, not just bleach. We need something, because there probably is that stain, uh, that, that yeah, saltwater yeah. well, stain. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't use white, white you could? vinegar. Okay. <laughs> of course. Yeah, duh. So you would do that to really get that, that you know, that water the line. Fish gunk. Yeah. But then you could turn it into, if you wanted to turn it into a table, how could we put like maybe glass on top of well, it? Well, yeah, and you, you're, you're going to want to elevate that also as well. Either Well, here, there's one or two things you could do because it's not tall enough to be a table height. Right. But so, you have to build either a base, uh -huh. right, or something on top of it so you see the fish tank element below the base, right? So yeah, you could just amend, you know, do it out of plywood, or you could frame it up. It, it it wouldn't be difficult. It's just where do you want to see it? You want to see it lower? You want to see it high? Mm -hmm. Or you want to see it right in the middle? Mm -hmm. Don't forget there has to be access to get to the plants inside. Once you do that, so there have, have to be a little trap door. Or how about this too? I've seen this done where you now you're using the aquarium almost like just a, as a planter, mm -hmm. and so the glass that becomes your top and you whatever kind of base that you put underneath it, because like you say, it needs to have some height. Yeah. But imagine taking the, the glass top to a glass cutter, or you can cut it yourself, yeah. and you cut a rectangle in the center, and that's the glass top, and sitting just on the edge of the aquarium, but now there's a hole in the middle so the plants can oh, come that's through cool. the center. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it's not just you know a terrarium, but sure. it's like tall plants that yeah, are coming yeah, yeah. out of there. I like it. Yeah, because yeah, you could have that made at the glass co glass company, and then they'll they'll bevel the edges and won't be sharp. it look nice. Yeah. yeah. You could even use that as a nice patio. Piece of That's kind of cool, yeah. yeah. And then the plants grow fill out, it, but you just got to make sure you don't dump your glass of wine inadvertently no, 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 into no. the plant. You have it, but have to use plastic wine glasses. How yeah, about like sh shells and rocks? I don't know why not. Shells and rocks, a nice seascape. Just highlight them. Put sand with some light. Fill it with sand and yeah. different beautiful, like you know, conch shells. Well, now it's like a Zen garden almost. Kind of is. Yeah. You can also just fill it up with just rocks, like just Zen rocks, lava rocks. And then you could also, and then you know anything that's highlighted with that grow lighter is going to look great. Yeah. So it can be a, an art exhibit, for you could, example. You can put a nice little piece of driftwood in there. Yeah. And display it with, let's say, some other collectibles. See, I'm afraid though, if you put the driftwood, then you're going to get talked into getting the lizard. I know. And I did that. Or one the too, gecko. Man. Did I did. Have, I did the lizard. Didn't work. I, <laughs> <laughs> You've done it all. It's just like you know. I tried so hard to to get these. You know, the kid. When you have your first kid, it's like, Dad, I want a, an elephant. Okay, no worries. I'll get one now. <laughs> you know, and, and then by the third kid, I'm just lizard? like, No, we don't. We don't have pets in this house. <laughs> what happened to the lizard? The lizard just didn't quite make it. Did he crawl out of his? He home? turned a strange color. 
Oh, I tried. I did everything. I think he was in the. I don't think we had the right temperature uh-huh. with the light. We had him out in an area that was more of a porch area, and uh-huh. I, I think the environment was unsuitable. So you have to do and you know, when you touch the lizards with your hands, mm-hmm. they can give you salmonella, and conversely, you oh, can gross. infect them, and la, you have to la, use la, hand la. sanitizer. Gross. And, uh, anyway, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you might want to just turn your. Just, watch, just look at lizards in the no, desert for crying out loud. Fill it up with potpourri. Fill it up with potpourri. There you go. Anyway, Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards. Yeah.